Hi, I'm Megan. Today I want to talk to you about heart rate under anesthesia and when that heart rate gets outside of the normal range, what some causes are for that and how you as the anesthetist can treat that. So first of all, let's talk about tachycardia. Uh, generally speaking, uh, I consider a dog to be tachycardic when their heart rate's greater than 140 and a cat when their heart rate is greater than 200. Now remember, this is all under anesthesia. So I prefer that my patients under anesthesia normally run a little bit lower than they would if they were jumping around in their kennel. So uh, depending on the reference that you use, depending on the hospital where you work, these numbers may be a little bit different, but I like to think, especially of those dogs um, over 140, I think there's probably something that I can do to help get that heart rate a little bit lower. So let's talk about some of the causes for that tachycardia. The most common one is probably light anesthesia, especially as you're moving them from your prep area to your surgery area, um, just making sure that you get them in a good plane of anesthesia. Second common cause is pain or surgical manipulation. Uh, depending on the procedure that they're having, uh, what you use as your pre-meds, you may see, especially as the doctor kind of picks up intestines or starts, you know, removing ovaries and the uterus that you may see that heart rate increase from pain or just the manipulation of organs. Drugs definitely need to be taken into consideration. Know and understand what you used as a pre-med. Um, some hospitals are giving atropine as a pre-med. That's gonna keep the heart rate high. Ketamine can also get the heart rate a little bit higher than what you may be used to. So if you're using a different drug than what you're used to, make sure that you understand if that's going to cause tachycardia in your patient while they're under anesthesia. Hypovolemia is a very common cause depending on the procedure in the patient. If you're removing a foreign body and the animal's been vomiting for a few days, they're slightly hypovolemic going into surgery, that may be a problem. So you need to understand if that's what's going on, you're going to treat that very differently than you would treat that patient who's tachycardic because of pain. Anemia is another reason. If you're doing, performing a splenectomy, um, some C-sections can get pretty anemic. So understanding the procedure that you're doing, how the patient was doing before they went in, how much blood loss happened. Um, but definitely we can see that heart rate increase if the number of red blood cells circulating through the body is lower, the body's gonna increase that heart rate to try and spread those red blood cells out to continue to perfuse all of their cells. Hypoxia is also a problem. Um, if you have a trauma patient that's got some thoracic trauma, if the patient has pneumonia, um, if you have a doctor who's leaning on their chest so that they can't ventilate under anesthesia, obese animals who are laying on their back, they just may not be getting enough oxygen. If there's a problem with the endotracheal tube, if there's a problem with your anesthesia machine, this can certainly cause an increased heart rate if they're not getting enough oxygen into their lungs. So this is a long list of reasons that can cause tachycardia in our patients under anesthesia and they're not all treated the same. So as the anesthetist, it's really important that you identify what the problem is and then come up with your treatment for it. So look at the big picture. That's my best advice to you. Don't simply look at the heart rate and say, oh, it's really fast. I bet this patient is painful. Let me turn up their gas. You need to look at everything that's happening with that patient look at their blood pressure. Blood pressure and heart rate need to be looked at together, especially under anesthesia. That's gonna help tip you off to what the treatment is. If the heart rate is high and the blood pressure is low, that tells me that patient's probably not painful. We're probably looking more at a hypovolemia situation. If the heart rate is high and the blood pressure is high, okay, maybe that patient is light, maybe that patient is painful, I can go ahead and turn up the gas. So make sure that you look at blood pressure. Look at their mucous membrane color and their capillary refill time. If that patient is under a drape, crawl under there and see how they're perfusing their mucous membranes. That's really important. Look at the big picture. Do they need a fluid bolus? Do you need to increase the gas? Do you need to provide more pain meds, different pain meds, put them on a CRI? These are all things that you should be thinking about before you reach to turn up that gas, before you reach for that fluid bolus. So again, look at the big picture look at your blood pressure in conjunction with your heart rate and that will help you make your decision for how to treat that. Now let's switch gears and think about bradycardia under anesthesia. 
For me, dogs, when they get less than 60 beats per minute, I'm going to consider them bradycardic. Cats, never allowed to get below 100 for me. Cats really don't have a lot of reserves to manage that bradycardia, so I do have a hard and fast line at 100 with cats. Dogs, eh, if they're gonna hang out, it's 56 and everything else looks okay, I may let them get there, um, but really with cats, don't let them get too slow because they'll just continue to drop until you've gone to the bad place. So reasons that we can see bradycardia in our patients. Probably the most common is that they're a little too deep under anesthesia. So use you know, what you know, all of your tools to determine if that's the problem. Hypothermia, also extremely common, especially for cats, for little dogs, long procedures where their abdomen is open and you can see all that heat escaping from them. So do the best you can to keep that patient warm because severe hypothermia is really going to drop your heart rate. Drugs. There are plenty of drugs that we administer to patients that are going to cause bradycardia. So when we're looking at the opioids that we give, if that patient has received um, dexmedetomidine, um, a lot of the, you know, ace promazine, if you're using that as a pre-med, all of those are going to drop your heart rate. So really, again, understand what you're giving and the effect that it's going to have on your patient. Severe hypotension, severe hypoxia, the heart rate will increase for a little while, and if it's not addressed, as the animal kind of slips deeper into the bad place, uh, their heart rate will drop. So make sure that you're paying attention to that high heart rate and get that addressed so that you don't have it drop low um, because of hypotension or hypoxia. So again, when we're talking about treating bradycardia, look at the big picture. Look at all of the parts together. Look at the blood pressure. Look at their gum color. Look at their temperature. Look at all of their vital signs before you determine what you think the cause is and how you're going to treat it. Do you need to give this animal pain management so that you can turn the gas down? Are they too deep? Is that the problem? Do you need to provide more heat, cover their feet? Um, provide some heat over their inhaled air. That oxygen that they're breathing with every breath is ice cold. So if you can warm up their inhaled air, you may be able to increase their temperature. Covering their head, covering their feet, covering their chest, anything that's not being touched by the surgeon, try to, try to you know, conserve heat that way for them. And then you can also treat bradycardia with drugs. Um, atropine, glycopyrrolate, they're both anticholinergic drugs, so they're going to increase the heart rate. Atropine is going to work more quickly and it's going to wear off more quickly. Glycopyrrolate takes a little bit longer to kick in, but it's also going to last a little bit longer. So depending on where you are, the availability of the drugs and the procedure that you're doing are going to help you choose which drug you're going to do. But remember, um, there's no such thing as just a benign drug that you give. So if you can treat that bradycardia by lowering their um, gas anesthetic, if you can treat that by warming them up a little bit and you can get away with not having to give them a drug, that's going to be ideal. But more commonly, we're often reaching for either atropine or glycopyrrolate for these patients who get bradycardic under anesthesia. Also remember naloxone. Perhaps your patient is having a bad reaction to opioids. Maybe they got an overdose of opioids. Uh, maybe that is what's causing the problem, especially as these patients um, get hypoxic, get hypotensive, hypothermic, you may need to reverse the drugs that you have. So just keep that in mind. So my best advice under anesthesia, treat the patient, not the machine. Let your machine tell you, hey, I think this patient is tachycardic or bradycardic, but make sure that you're looking at blood pressure, you're looking at mucous membranes, gum color, um, body temperature, all of those things together to help you determine the cause so that you can get the right treatment for heart rate issues under anesthesia.